everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Leanna today I'm bringing you this video because this is something that is incredibly important to me if you know me at all if you've been around this channel at all you know I have a lot of health issues the biggest one being chronic pain and I am on disability here in Ontario it's called ODSP Ontario Disability Support Program I've made two separate videos, one on my health issues, uh, my health story, and one on being on disability and our healthcare system in Canada. I'm going to link both of those below if you'd like to know more about me and more about our healthcare system. You're going to need some context, I feel. I, I will tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I do have fibromyalgia, complex regional pain syndrome, myofascial pain, and uh, chronic migraines. I also have chronic fatigue, um, basically a, a lot of things that make me very unwell. Uh, I struggle with a lot of joint compression and trigger points in my body. So joint compression meaning that my joints get pulled up too high into the socket and causes a lot of friction and a lot of pain. Um, this is due largely in part to a scoliosis that I have had since, probably since birth, but has progressed throughout my uh, life. And this also affects the muscles in my body. I have myofascial pain, meaning that uh, the fascia, which runs over all the other muscle groups in your body, um, I get a lot of pain in there and trigger points muscles that bunch up. So this affects the joints, the joints affect my muscles. Nothing really works quite right in my body. And this of course causes me a lot of pain. It causes me a lot of inflammation, uh, a lot of fatigue. And I generally feel very flu-like most days. So even on a good day, I don't feel 100% well. And so here in Ontario, our premier is named Doug Ford. Let me insert a photo of his asshole face. Don't you just want to punch him when you see him? I know I do. <laughs> He's been making many radical changes since he was elected. I did not elect him. <laughs> I would never have elected him. Um, many have been severely impacting marginalized groups. Uh, let me walk you through some of the things that he's been doing so far. I, he's been basically um, restricting immigration policies, school policies, and healthcare industries. So he cut off legal aid to immigrants completely recently. He has denied ODSB or uh, disability increases which would have helped us significantly if you don't know from the disability and healthcare video I did. For reference, we are receiving less than the minimum wage from 1998. So we are living about 40% below, if not more, than the poverty line. Uh, we do not get a lot of money. It's, it's bad. And so that increase would have helped so many people. And he denied us that in favor of the Buck a Beer program. Because that's really important, right? And this, this program was a failure anyway, because very few breweries are still allowing this to happen. So the fact that that program is basically no longer in existence, and he is still trying to make cuts. He's increasing class sizes in schools, but still hasn't increased the wages of teachers. And he's also um, getting rid of programs that would help schools and students with special needs, such as IEPs and uh, getting rid of the grace period for students, college-age students, university-age students on OSAP, which is a program to help you with your student loans. So basically you get out of school, there's no time for you to find a job. You have to immediately start paying your loans back. 
uh, how likely do you think it is that somebody is going to get a job straight out of school? Not very likely. And now this man is proposing some truly terrifying cuts to healthcare by changing our OHIP program. Now, OHIP is basically our Ontario uh, hospital insurance program. If something is covered, it gets billed to OHIP. So even if you have no insurance or low insurance, um, something such as an x-ray would get billed through OHIP. A lot of different things get billed through there. But he wants to change some things such as um, taking away local anesthesia for colonoscopies. That would be considered a luxury now. You would have to pay for that out of pocket. So if you want to go and get colonoscopy, you're not going to have the anesthesia, or if you want it, you have to pay for it. And as a few representatives from the Crohn's and Colitis Society have said, that's going to um, make it so that many people no longer want to get the colonoscopies. And that will increase the likelihood that people may get uh, bowel cancer and colon cancer and not realize that they have it because they're postponing scans which would show their doctor that it's there. So that's not good. Most troubling for me and many others, however, is the fact that Doug Ford wants to limit or completely erase preventative pain treatments. Basically, he is wanting to limit pain injections, which have ordinarily, up until now, been billed through OHIP. So this is uh, like trigger point injections, nerve blocks, any sort of injection that's not like Botox, you could get for free in Canada for the most part. And I know maybe if you're sitting here and you're from another country, you might be saying, well, lucky you, we have to pay for that here. I get that. This isn't a competition, though. There are so many costs in Canada that a lot of people don't realize. This is why I'm encouraging you to look at my disability and healthcare video, because this is going to be a huge problem. He wants to limit injections to four per visit and four sets per year, which would mean 16 injections total. And that's not a lot. <laughs> so, for example, myself, I get between five and 10 per visit when I see my pain specialist. My mother, who also has chronic pain, she gets about 10 to 12. And a lot of people with similar types of pain that we have, they get way more than that. They could have 30, 50 per visit. So what are they going to do? And the thing is, he is saying that you, even if you were given the option to pay for it out of pocket, you may not actually be able to he may not even give you that option and this is all without consulting pain doctors and pain patients why would you do that keep in mind that approximately 30 percent of the population in canada has chronic pain of some sort now, now maybe not all of those people are being seen at pain clinics and being treated with injections but 30% of the population is a lot of people in chronic pain. And to say, we're taking away one of your only free treatments is not only scary, it's dangerous. So let me just walk you through this a little bit. In Ontario, there's approximately 14.32 million residents. And if 30% of Ontarians are in chronic pain, that would be 4,296,000 people. And that's a lot. Without telling you exactly what city I live in, I can tell you that we are edging closer and closer to about 400,000 people with only 
one hospital-based pain clinic in the entire city. And that pain clinic has about a two-year long wait list to get into it. And once you do get into it, they can't treat you on a consistent basis. They don't have the means to do that because they're too swamped. They're too busy. I can tell you this because I used to be a patient there in around 2011. They couldn't treat me more than once every six to eight months. That's unacceptable. You're in pain. You need treatment now. So they have to refer you out to community-based clinics if you need treatment on a regular basis. And now at these community clinics, their waiting lists are getting longer and longer too because the shortage of doctors is a real problem. The one that I've been at for several years now, they started with two doctors when I got there and then swiftly down to one. And it was that one doctor up until late last year. Luckily, they now have three doctors, but it's simply unacceptable to have such a strong lack of resources available at these clinics that hospital that the only hospital clinic has to refer these patients out to. So the hospital has not enough resources and the community clinics have not enough resources as it is either. And if Doug Ford has his way, these community clinics are going to close down because they can't do the same procedures as you would be able to do in a hospital. They don't have imaging guidance to be able to do certain injections. They can't do more complex procedures such as an epidural without anesthesiologists on hand. So they're limited to basically doing basic peripheral nerve blocks in uh, hands and feet. Uh, they can do Botox here and there, and they can do trigger point injections, which is largely what I get. And if you're not allowed to do these, what can a community pain clinic offer you? Nothing. And you might be thinking, well, maybe they could prescribe medication. Um, <laughs> not so much. Consider that our opioid guidelines have been swiftly changing over the past few years. It used to be that wherever you go, doctors would prescribe you opi opioids for pain. Now that's basically not going to happen. Many doctors will not prescribe certain doses or certain kinds of opioids at all, and some won't prescribe any op opioids, period, because many have been delisted and Canadians are the second highest users per capita of op opioids in the world. Why can I, why can I not say opioids properly today? <laughs> in Ontario alone, there were over 1000 opioid, opioid related fatalities in 2018. So when opioids are being restricted by our doctors, but our only other free pain treatment option is being restricted or taken away entirely, what do you think will happen? When you consider that in 2010, patients waiting for access to pain clinics spent a median of more than $17,500 out of pocket per year on lost labor time, private health care treatments, and these include physiotherapy, registered massage therapy, and psychiatry. Most people will not be able to afford alternative therapies at all. They won't be able to pay for injections out of pocket if that's even an option for us. So I'm going to tell you what I think will happen if Doug Ford goes through with this, which I sincerely hope he does not more people will end up on disability or, or Ontario Works, which is the equivalent of unemployment services, because we will no longer have a way to treat pain early and effectively to prevent it from, from becoming chronic pain. People will end up clogging the already overpacked and under-resourced ER rooms, hoping for relief there of some sort, People will look for dangerous ways to find relief, such as turning to street drugs. 
uh, such as car fentanyl, which is absolutely dangerous and deadly. And lastly, many people will try to kill themselves. To put this into even further perspective, Ontarians make roughly 5.25 million ER visits per year, and that's roughly 23 million hours. Because our ERs do not function the way that they should. As I said, they are under-resourced. And can you imagine how many people would end up in the ER looking for opioids, hoping that somebody would prescribe them painkillers, looking for somebody who might do injections on them, or end up in there because of some sort of opioid-related crisis, or having attempted suicide. It would be a lot of people. It would be probably an epidemic. And ER visits have already increased 72% between 2008 and 2018 because of the opioid crisis. An ambulance ride billed to the government costs $240. And a small ER visit, as in one that does not uh, contain a lot of diagnostics, does not contain uh, complex surgeries, does not have to do with a whole lot of um, advanced care, that costs OHIP and the government $150. So this is starting to sound very expensive. It's not, it's not sounding like this is going to save anyone any money, is it? But wait, there's one more thing. In 2008, it was estimated that costs in treating chronic pain Canada-wide, not Ontario-wide, was $6 billion, but productivity costs related to job loss and sick days was more than six times that at $37 billion. So again, sounding like a lot of money lost, not money gained. Pain injections billed to OHIP cost 20 to $50, depending on the injection. Pain treatment is not a privilege. It's not a luxury. It's not something that people do for fun. It's a necessity and taking that away will cost people their livelihood and their lives. This shouldn't be a debate. And one thing to keep in mind, something that I personally have found is that pain is not something that people care about unless they're in it. I mean, how often are chronic pain patients called to the table for a discussion? We're not. Are our lives disposable? They're not. And I am upset. Because I don't know what I would do. Just picture me before injections. Picture the worst like my mom said, picture the worst pain you've had. Unable to move. And you're in bed all day. And then you find something that helps. And somebody wants to take it away from you. And no, your life isn't perfect now. But you can do basic things. You can go out for a little while. You can sit up and film videos that you want to film. You're able to exercise, which you haven't been able to do in years. You're not using a walker every single day, which you were doing for years. And if somebody takes that away, you know your body is going to get way worse and you don't know what you would do because opioids made your body worse and nobody would prescribe them to you anyway, even if you thought they would help. 
So what would I do? I don't know. And I already do physiotherapy and I already do massage and I can barely afford it. So if you care about chronic pain patients at all, please write to the people that I'll have listed below because I'm going to have contact information in my description box. Because this is going to ruin lives and we can't let that happen. Over 4 million lives could be ruined. Just something to think about, please. Thanks for watching.